Good morning. May I invite everyone to take their seats at this time? And may I also apologize for the unbearable heat. Um, the matter is being addressed, and we hope it will be sorted as soon as possible. Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Jamaica, and Chair of the Council for Foreign and Community Relations, Dr. Carla Barnett, Secretary General of the Caribbean Community, Honorable E.P. Chet Green, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Immigration and Trade, Antigua and Barbuda, and outgoing Chair of the Council for Foreign and Community Relations, distinguished sorry, Honorable Ministers of the Caribbean Community, or ASG, here seated on the podium. Your Excellency Juan Fernandez Trigo, Secretary of State for Latin America, the Caribbean, and the Spanish language of the Kingdom of Spain. Dean and members of the DIP Corps, Dean and members of the Consular Corps, Ambassador Donna Ford, who I just mentioned, Assistant Secretary General, Foreign and Community Relations, and members of the CARICOM Secretariat. Other delegates, members of the CARICOM Secretariat team, members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen present here this morning, and those who have joined virtually, good morning. It is my honor to welcome you to this opening ceremony on the occasion of the 26th meeting of the Council for Foreign and Community Relations being held under the chairmanship of Minister Johnson Smith. May I please ask you to stand now for the singing of the national anthem of Jamaica. Please be seated. I now have the honor to invite Dr. Carla ben Barnett, Secretary General of the Caribbean Community, to bring welcome remarks. Dr. Secretary General. Good morning, everyone. A senator, the Honorable. Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Jamaica, and Chairperson of the Council of Foreign and Community Relations. Honorable E.P. Chet Green, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Antigua and Barbuda, and outgoing Chair of the Council of Foreign and Community Relations. Foreign Ministers of the Caribbean Community and other Heads of Delegations, Ambassador Ford, or Secretary, Assistant Secretary General of Foreign and community relations, distinguished delegates, all other protocols having been observed. It is a pleasure to come together in person for a regular meeting of the Council for Foreign and Community Relations. The in-person format for the regular meetings provides a much needed opportunity to engage on issues that are critical to achieving the community's strategic objectives. During this auspicious year in which we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Caribbean community, this gathering affords an opportunity for reflection and celebration of the foreign policy coordination milestones that have supported the longevity 
and the successes of our community, as well as to acknowledge and refocus on those things we know we can do better. I express appreciation to the Honorable E.P. Chet Green, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Antigua and Barbuda and outgoing chair of this council for his leadership during the past year. And I warmly welcome you, Senator, the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, as chair of COFCOR, and wish you a successful year. I also thank the government and people of Jamaica for the warm welcome and the excellent arrangements made for this meeting. Madam Chair, that well-known Jamaican hospitality and organizational capability have ensured a good environment for these deliberations once the AC works. <laughs> this meeting is taking place against the backdrop of an international order burdened by several overlapping and mutually reinforcing global crises. These include the negative economic and social impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, divisive and challenging geopolitical issues which undermine multilateralism, and the unjust impact of climate change on small islands and low-lying coastal developments, developing states that have not contributed to climate change. It is our responsibility to do the best we can to build resilience to the impact of climate change. At the same time, we must continue to advocate to ensure that those that caused and continue to cause climate change do much more to moderate their impact and meaningfully support the resilience and recovery of those countries like ours, which bear the greatest burden of climate change. In this environment where geopolitical balances of power are in a period of great flux, the region's leadership on matters of global import remains essential. Over the next two days, this Council's agenda will address how best to position the community on the hemispheric and global stages and advance a coordinated and strategic approach to strengthening our external relations. Member States of the Caribbean community highly value the long-standing relationships forged with our external partners and the excellent spirit of cooperation which characterize these relationships. Solidarity with our partners in a rules-based and principled context has been mutually beneficial in the political, economic, environmental, health, scientific, and technical spheres. We look forward to continued engagement with our trusted partners to further strengthen our collective actions. With insightful discussions over the next two days, we can take significant strides to strengthen coordination of the community's foreign policy. I trust that dialogue will be frank, robust, and most importantly, deliver innovative approaches and tangible results. The Caribbean community has a complex and a formidable task, task at hand. However, our integration movement and our intra-community intra relations have already built a strong foundation on which we can continue to devise solutions to improve the lives and the livelihoods of the people of the region. In a world where multilateral rule-based systems are under strain, CARICOM as small states must rely more than ever on focused and coordinated diplomacy based on those principles on which we are founded. We must bolster our relations with like-minded states and continue to advocate for multilateralism, including a reformed United Nations. Madam Chair, Honorable Ministers, let us fully utilize the opportunity that this meeting provides for meaningful and results-oriented dialogue on strategies to strengthen coordination of our foreign relations for the well-being of the peoples of CARICOM. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Secretary General. It is now my honor to invite the Honorable E.P. Chet Green, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Immigration and Trade, Antigua and Barbuda, and outgoing Chair of COFCOR to bring remarks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator, Host Minister, Incoming Chair of COFCOR, 
esteemed Kamini Johnson Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of this blessed nation of Jamaica, Dr. Carla Barnett, our esteemed SG of CARICOM, Your Excellency Donna Ford, Assistant SG, distinguished colleague ministers of the community, CARICOM ambassadors, members of the diplomatic corps, staff at the CARICOM secretariat, and of course, members of the media whose work we depend on to keep the region informed and united. I wish you a very warm pre-carnival good morning from Antigua Barbuda. <laughs> and of course, that's an invitation. <laughs> Allow me to express tremendous gratitude in the first instance to our host government and people of Jamaica for their warm, pun intended, warm hospitality <laughs> and the very excellent service we shall on display for all of us to see. I also want at this time to commend and thank the outstanding leadership of the CARICOM Secretary of Staff for collaborating and executing what we all hope and certainly work, for, work towards a successful COFCO. Permit me also to use the opportunity to address you as the outgoing chairman. And you know, Caribbean politicians, when we come, we say, we say little. When we leave, we say a lot. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll be brief this morning. <laughs> but I want to address you as chairman of the COF Corps, where we have and continue to champion the rights of our people, addressing the needs of the region in an attempt to elevate the livelihoods of our citizens while enhancing CARICOM's presence globally. Throughout my chairmanship, operating in a post-COVID world, it certainly has presented its share among the challenges. However, I'm pleased to report that through our resi resilience and collective efforts, we have provided opportunities to further develop and diversify the region's economies, work in progress for the benefit of our citizens. Colleagues, I believe it's imperative for us to utilize our respective talents to continue the work of the signatories of the original treaty of Chagaramas in advancing the Caribbean region's economies, uplifting the standard of living for people, while strengthening the process of integration. It is especially important for the excellent work of CARICOM to be echoed across the region and throughout the globe, given that we are now about to celebrate 50 years of this organization. For this, we must once again say thanks to the CARICOM Secretariat for the tremendous work it has done and continues to do over the years in growing this institution, which is the oldest surviving institution in this hemisphere, and by extension, in any developing part of the world. Nonetheless, I believe that there are still areas which we must continuously address, such as our community relations. With a common language and shared culture, our region should be closer than we are at present. Unlike other institutions such as the European Union, we are not landlocked, but separated by sea. The pandemic has further exacerbated the issue of affordable regional transportation. In order to achieve CARICOM's pillars of regional integration, it is necessary for us to address this issue of regional travel with the urgency that is required. Our respective member states, along with the Secretariat, need to devise workable plans and solutions to provide affordable air and maritime travel. This requires, of course, lobbying efforts through the Ministries of Foreign Affairs and Overseas Missions, the Friendly Nations for Developmental Assistance. Additionally, I would wish to encourage the Secretariat to further create an environment that will foster stronger community engagement through improved internal relations. Through this, we will have a much better Caribbean community where our people can express their talents and innovative capabilities to further lend to regional development. Over the next two days, we'll engage in various topics relevant to the community 
and on the margins engaging bilaterals. The 11th UK Caribbean Forum will immediately follow the conclusion of COFCO, and I believe that it will, present, it will present rather an ideal opportunity for CARICOM to hold a serious dialogue with the Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs of the UK Government on matters surrounding our development. Assistance in areas, key areas, such as education, security, climate resilience and improved infrastructure should feature high on our agenda as this will lend to the overall development of our region. Furthermore, the fight, I emphasize fight for operations, which is so dear to CARICOM, must be presented to our UK counterpart as a collective concern for an injustice that was perpetrated against our forebears. Additionally, the fifth CARICOM Mexico summit will follow for further enhancement between our region and Mexico. Mexico has long been a friend of the Caribbean community, and we must note the importance of Mexico to our region. Colleagues, I'm not here in trying to set the agenda, but certainly reflecting on the last year in office and the continuum of our efforts. In that context, allow me to, co to commend our fellow member state of St. Vincent and Grenadines, which currently serves as President Pro Temper for the CELAC. I think it's a quite admirable achievement for a small nation to serve in this capacity. A CELAC serves to unite the Caribbean and Latin America. To my colleague, Minister from St. Vincent and Grenadines, I wish to pledge on behalf of Antigua and Barbados full support to your presidency and can speak without fear of contradiction in committing similar support from all Caribbean nations here assembled. Today we meet at a time overshadowed by conflict within our community. The grim situation in Haiti has presented a challenge not only to that member state, but for our entire region. I am, however, of the firm belief that we must work collectively to devise solutions and address the situation. Ultimately, the decision on the direction that Haiti will forge depends primarily upon its citizens. Therefore, there must be national consensus within Haiti, while those of us in the wider region are called upon to demonstrate patience and corresponding or parallel support to allow for the self-determination of the Haitian people. Moreover, the Russian-Ukraine conflict still presents a challenge on the global stage with ever-lingering economic effects on our economies and our livelihoods. As a community, I urge that we continue to advocate for the swift resolution of this conflict before it escalates any further, and to do so since our very lives depend upon it. I promise I'll be short, and so I'm sure we'll identify the next words. In closing, I wish to congratulate my colleague, Minister Johnson Smith, on her assumption of the Chair of COFCO. I've always known you to be an advocate for CARICOM and of its endeavors. I'm assured that your leadership and determination will serve to advance the COFCO and, by extension, our region. I pledge my continued support during your tenure as we work assiduously towards advancing the work of our governments and of this noble institution. Our region has long been known for our resilience, our determination and fortitude, and I'm confident that with our combined efforts and your leadership, we will succeed in all of our aspirations. Unfortunately, I leave tomorrow a result of the last elections in Antigua, where I can't afford to miss a seat in Parliament. But I equally have the commitment and belief in my colleagues that COFCO here in Kingston will be a resounding success under the chairmanship of Her Excellency Camilla Johnson-Smith will lead us to new, direct, new parts, new heights of regional development. I thank you.
Thank you, Minister Green. It is now my honor to invite Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Jamaica and Chair of the Council for Foreign and Community Relations to deliver remarks. Minister. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Dr. Carla Barnett, Secretary General of the Caribbean Community, the Honorable E.P. Chet Green, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Antigua and Barbuda and outgoing Chair of the Council for Foreign and Community Relations, uh, who also, as a result of the last elections, has an additional portfolio as well. Uh, there's always uh, more work as a reward for good work. On, <laughs> so, but we, um, we're glad you are here with us, even for the day, Minister Green. My friends and colleague ministers of the Caribbean community, your Excellency Juan Fernandez Trigo, Secretary of State for Latin America, the Caribbean and Spanish language of the Kingdom of Spain, Assistant Secretary General Ford, joining us here on the platform, Dean and members of the Diplomatic Corps, Dean and members of the Consular Corps, members of the media, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I extend a particularly warm Jamaican welcome to everyone here this morning. And as my colleague, Dr. Brown Wiltz, I assure you, sir, <laughs> I assure you, sir, that the matter is being addressed. Uh, my apologies uh, this, for this uh, inconvenience, and I'm assured that it will be sorted in very, very short order. Technology, Technology once more. Uh, it is a proud moment for the city of Kingston to once more host this for the second time, uh, the Council of Community and Foreign Relations, having been the venue for the, 10th, the 12th meeting in 2009. Our gathering today marks the first in-person regular meeting of the COF Corps since 2019, and the first at which the Council will have the privilege of being joined in person by the Secretary General, by Secretary General Barnett, since her assumption of duties in 2021. As this is the Secretary General's first official visit to Jamaica in her current role, I want to extend a special welcome to her on behalf of the government and people of Jamaica. Although as a fellow UIMONA alumna, like several of us in this room, this may well be a homecoming. So welcome once more, Madam SG. I also want to thank the team for the, of the Foreign and Community Relations Directorate of the Secretariat, led by Assistant Secretary General Donna Ford, for the guidance and support provided to my team at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade in the preparations for the hosting of this meeting. The 26th meeting of the COF Corps takes on added significance as we celebrate the community's year-long commemoration of the 50th anniversary of CARICOM to be formally observed on the 4th of July 2023 in Trinidad and Tobago. Our Caribbean community enjoys the special distinction of being the oldest surviving regional integration movement in the developing world. This partnership having delivered a CARICOM half century demonstrates our resilience and is a milestone of which we can be justly proud. We're pleased that Mr. Andre Bartley, who we hope will be joining us, was the winner of the CARICOM 50 logo competition, and we congratulate him on his creativity and success. And I look forward to taking part alongside the Secretary General and all of you in a commemorative tree planting ceremony later today as the first of Jamaica's official CARICOM 50 events. Colleagues and excellencies, I am honored to take over the chairmanship of the COF Corps from our colleague, the Honorable E.P. Chet Green, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Immigration and Trade and Agriculture of Antigua and Barbuda, our outgoing chairperson. I want to thank you personally, Chet, and also in the role of incoming chair for your excellent stewardship over the past year, which has left us on sound footing to undertake the critical work ahead of us this year. Over the next two days, as we work through our agenda, and we're pleased that you'll be with us for retreat, we must deliberate and strategize with the ultimate goal of achieving the best possible opportunities and outcomes for our community in our engagements with hemispheric and global partners. 
We're meeting at a time when the community is at a pivotal inflection point. We're 50 years old. Our decisions will lay the foundation for the region's future and must determine our ability to thrive, not just survive, in spite of myriad and constantly evolving global dynamics. While we welcome the recent WHO announcement that COVID-19 no longer represents a global health emergency, the war in Ukraine has now passed the one-year mark and shows no signs of immediate abatement, and we continue to feel the impact, the effects of geopolitical tensions on both food and energy security. Moreover, the pernicious impacts of climate change and other issues such as transnational crime facilitated by the trade in small arms and light weapons continue to damage our communities and affect lives on a daily basis. Together, with the developmental losses incurred by the pandemic, these interlocking crises underscore the vulnerability of developing countries, and especially small island and low-lying coastal developing states. It therefore falls to us as the COFCOR to work with ourselves or, in our, or across our region and with our development partners, like-minded states, third states, and regional groupings, including the AU, the EU, and membership of the ASEAN to achieve equitable, meaningful solutions for which the benefits can redound directly to our people throughout the region. Our strength in working with extra-regional partners lies in our cohesion. And even as each of our countries maintain active bilateral relations, and we encourage you in your meetings in the margins of this one, the region must also work collectively and effectively in a highly coordinated manner to strengthen community relations and institutions and to pursue regional foreign policy objectives as best as possible. In fact, we're reminded of the driving principle of our community and this council that, and I quote, the interests of the entire region can best be served by the maximization of cooperation by all governments concerned. This principle was, in fact, put forward by Jamaica at the seventh conference of heads of government of the Commonwealth Caribbean countries held in Trinidad and Tobago in October 1972. It was part of a larger proposal by Jamaica for the establishment of a standing committee of foreign ministers of the Commonwealth Caribbean countries for the coordination of foreign policy. What is now essentially our cough core? So as we meet here in Kingston for the 26th meeting of the COF Corps, the imperative of 50 years ago has not changed. Regrettably, nor admittedly, have many of our challenges. The COF Corps' role in defining the region's place in the world through strategic engagement of bilateral partners and hemispheric and multilateral institutions is key to the elevation of the Caribbean voice and worldview on the international stage. And with that voice, we will continue to offer the world Caribbean-grown solutions while championing the interests of the 16 million citizens who make up our community across our member states and associate members. Colleagues, excellencies, our Caribbean community, like other regional groupings, must continually provide opportunities for thorough and productive introspection. We therefore look forward to this meeting and particularly to our retreat for the opportunities to be open about our collective growth opportunities and to actively delineate, delineate achievable methods to strengthen its systems and processes. As we together take this opportunity to renew our commitment to concerted community action, we'll also consider how best to have robust, efficient community institutions adequately resourced to execute their mandates this will require agile, adaptive, and strategic policy decisions and mechanisms to predict, respond, and leverage changes in the international landscape. Our decisions will also need to benefit from active community engagement, as with full participation and active engagement in the COF core decision-making, we can better equip ourselves to realize the vision enunciated in Article 16 of the revised Treaty of Chagaramas. Colleagues, the COF Corps agenda, which Chet has helpfully started to, to, to outline, will allow us to attain some of these objectives as we give focus to ongoing processes at the United Nations, including in relation to Security Council reform, 
the development of a multidimensional vulnerability index, and the permanent forum of people of African descent. We'll also consider preparations on the way for the region's engagement in several upcoming UN high-level meetings on issues such as financing for development, sustainable development goals, SIDS, health, and climate change. It falls to us to consider and to seek to coordinate positions, again, as best as possible as we prepare to engage at the hemispheric level in the 53rd OAS General Assembly and the upcoming third EU CELAC Summit. The COF Corps will also be looking at how to further leverage the outcomes from the ninth summit of the Association of Caribbean States held last week in Guatemala as we deepen our cooperation with the countries of the greater Caribbean. As it pertains to CARICOM's bilateral relations with third states and other regional groupings, the COF Corps will prioritize discussions on deeper and more strategic engagement with the United States of America, Canada, Mexico, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, the Central American Integration System, SICA, India, and Africa. We'll also interface in person with the governments of Japan, Spain, and Slovenia. These engagements will allow us to deepen opportunities for regional collaboration. Relations with the United Kingdom will also get att um, great attention as we prepare for the convening of the 11th UK Caribbean Forum on Thursday. This will be the first in-person meeting of the forum in seven years and an important opportunity to collectively engage the Right Honorable James Cleverly, UK Foreign Secretary, as well as the Domin uh, representatives of the Dominican Republic and Cuba. At the community level, focus will rightly be placed on the ongoing political, security, and humanitarian crisis facing our sister nation, Haiti. Following the CARICOM mission to Haiti in February, led by the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, the community has remained engaged in the search for sustainable Haitian-led solutions and is committed to keeping Haiti on the international agenda at the highest levels. Only yesterday, Prime Minister Holness held discussions with the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres during his visit to Jamaica and reaffirmed the region's commitment to actively supporting the cause of Haiti. We must acknowledge that the global pace of delivery of support does not match the urgency of the situation and must assure our colleagues and sister country that we are agreed as CARICOM that we will not allow Haiti to be forgotten in its time of greatest need. The COF Corps will discuss next steps as the community continues to fulfill its good offices role and explore options for technical and security assistance. In order to accomplish this, we must effectively utilize existing mechanisms and candidly acknowledge when new frameworks or approaches are required. In line with the decisions of our heads of government, we must continue the process of renewal to ensure that our agendas can benefit from more strategic thinking and informed discussions. Colleagues, essentially, we must apply an analysis-based decision-making and principled foreign policy to achieve more meaningful outcomes from our engagements with international partners. We must work as a unit to continue to promote the value of multilateralism and to expand and elevate the influence and contributions of our community and of small states generally. We must continue to strengthen our relationships, both within ourselves, with our traditional partners, and those with whom we can advance South-South cooperation. We must also create an environment that enables collaboration, cooperation, and strategic partnerships with all sectors across civil society, national, regional, and international partners. To those ends, the mission of the COF Corps is clear. I honor greatly the mandate which you have handed to me, Chet, and it is my expectation that our deliberations will be rich and productive. It is my sincere hope and intention that the outcomes of this meeting will strategically position the community to face the challenges and to grasp the opportunities that do lie ahead. Having oriented us with the mission at hand, I would like to end on a note of hospitality, which seems to be cooling slightly, for which Jamaica and indeed our region are well known. So even as we conduct our region's uh, heavy agenda, it is my hope that you and your delegations will still find time to delight in the many culinary, cultural, and natural wonders of our beautiful island. We welcome you once more to the city of Kingston and again wish you a productive 
meeting. I thank you. Thank you, Minister Johnson Smith. And thanks to all who have taken the time to participate in this morning's opening ceremony. Distinguished, lady, distinguished ministers, Secretary General, heads of delegation, Assistant Secretary General, specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I now ask you to turn your attention to the screens as we close with the CARICOM song. Following the video, we will adjourn for a 15 minute coffee break following which the business sessions will commence for members of COFCOR. To heads of diplomatic missions and other specially invited guests, we appreciate your taking the time to join us this morning, and we wish you a safe travel to your destinations and best wishes for a wonderful rest of day. I invite you now to enjoy the video as we close this morning's opening ceremony. Thank you. Distant lands, our forefathers came, some seeking adventure, some bound in chains. Through battles waged and fought, through victory and pain, by test of their courage, our freedom was given. On building one Caribbean Raise your voices high Sing up your Caribbean pride Sing it loud and strong Feel our hearts beat as one Celebrate in song As we rise to heights where we Are stronger than these. We die, we pray, we love. We dance and we play. But we relate to each other. Rest in Yahweh. Today, as a people unite, united as one. Turn and steadfast, we stand. 
Thank you very much. You're now invited to enjoy the coffee break as we prepare for the business session commencing in 15 minutes. It's right to the left at the back. Thank you.